We're here today interviewing former basketball coach of LaRue County, Corky Cox. And Mr. Cox, tell us about your early childhood. Well, in my early childhood, I was born in Edmondson County, a, a little town called Ollie, Kentucky. And I'll never forget the, the experiences I had there because we went to a one-room school and then we had a wagon and a team for a school bus. And I'll, I'll never forget the uh, first day of school, uh, me and another boy got in a fight over a seat and I got a whip in the first day of school. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when I was 10 years old, my mother and father moved to West Point, Kentucky. And I went to elementary school there and, and high school through my sophomore year. And uh, after my sophomore year, my father moved across Salt River into Jefferson County and they ended up in graduation from Valley High School. But <clears throat> my dad owned a general store in West Point. <clears throat> and uh, as you know, we had floods in West Point all the time. And I'll never forget my dad's store was on the south end of town and we lived on the north end. And my dad wanted my brother and I to come down and, uh, and help him in the store. So we did, and on, on our way back home to eat lunch, we couldn't get there because the water had already come up so high that we couldn't get home. But I've seen the water in our house four feet deep in the upstairs. And, of course, and we lived in the highest place in town. But it was a, it was a nice community. Everybody knew everybody. And a funny thing about it was the Baptist preacher was the, uh, was the uh, policeman in the town. So he, he had a tough job <laughs> preaching on Sunday and locking everybody up on, on, during the week. But uh, I, I still have a lot of friends there, and I go by and where I grew up and, and uh, stop and pull the car off the road and drop a tear, you know. But my house is on the National Register, so... It it's, it's really means a lot to me there. But then, then the, at the end of my sophomore year, I moved to Valley High School because my dad had moved across the river. And we had, we had played we, uh, Valley uh, uh, the year before, and I had scored 36 points uh, against Valley. So when I moved up there, well, the coach put me on the JV team. I'll never forget that. So I had still a few weeks on the JV team. But... Uh, my experience with Valley was great. Uh, we still have a class reunion every year, and there's only about 12 or 13 of us left. I went to University of Louisville in, uh, in my freshman year. Well, back when I played, you had freshman teams, and the freshmen weren't allowed to play on the varsity. So we had a freshman team, and and we had a, a trip planned where we were going around the state of Kentucky playing all the junior colleges. Well, I was running at third guard, so one of the guards got snowbound in Akron, Ohio, and he couldn't get back for the for the, uh, the trip. So I got to start. So I'll never forget as long as I live. We played around Kentucky, and I came back home with a 25-point average. And the next game we had, the coach didn't start me. So I was upset, naturally. So anyway, finally the next game, well, I got to play the second and the fourth quarter, and I scored 22 points. And uh, when the uh, game was over, uh, Coach Dromo, the coach, called me in his office. He said, Corky, I know you're upset, but you're too small. You'll never be able to play at the University of Louisville. So I finished the uh, Last year being the most valuable player, and he called me in his office and apologized to me. So uh, that's one uh, one thing I remember. And I remember when he told me I was too small. My dad owned a at grocery store in uh, in West Point. I put a basketball goal up on the back of the of the store, and I shot basketball for eight hours a day. Man, I you know I, I just that's the way I am. I'm uh, you know when somebody tells me I can't do something, I'm going to do everything I, to, to make sure that I can do it. But, so that's what I did. And like I say, it ended up being a great situation with me. And I played with the greatest coach that ever coached. His first coaching job was here in Hodgenville. And his name was Mr. Hickman. And he later moved to Valley High School. And that's where I graduated from, Valley High School. And then went on to Louisville and played basketball for him. And, and uh, it, was, it was a great situation because he was a great coach. And you know, he is a funny thing. He would never get on a referee, and if you played for him, he wouldn't let you get on a referee because if you did, you were in trouble. But he he was a great man and did a lot of good things for me. And, of course, 
I've been honored a lot. I'm in the Basketball Hall of Fame at U of L. I was selected the outstanding guard to appear in Madison Square Garden in 1954. When I went to University of Louisville, I was in the Air Force ROTC program, and of course, when I graduated, I had to go to the uh, to the Air Force. And I'll never forget as long as I live. And I reported into the commanding officer. His desk was sitting catty corner to the door, and he talked to me a long time. And and uh, during this interview, I found out that he was an old basketball coach from Detroit. So when he finished with me, I saluted him, did a, did about face, and fell over a chair. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we, anyway, we got to be good friends after that. So my chief job in the Air Force after that was playing basketball. But I was in a refueling squadron where that uh, uh, you refuel refuel airplanes in the air. So anyway, we were flying to Eklund Field in Florida one time, and and uh, hydraulic system, you know, the wheels they couldn't get the wheels down, you know, and they lined us all up and put parachutes on us. I told them, I said. You know, you, you all may throw me out, but I'm not jumping out. <laughs> so anyway, we were lucky uh, after about 30 or 40 minutes while they were able mechanically to get the wheels down, so we were able to land all right. In the last game of the season, I slid into second base and dislocated my right shoulder. And the following week, I was supposed to sign a major league contract with the Philadelphia Phillies. But after dislocation of my shoulder, I couldn't throw anymore. Share some of those LaRue County stories with us. <laughs> well, of course, I was in the Air Force. And when I came home from the Air Force, why? Well, Mr. Hickman had heard that the basketball job was open here, and so he brought me down here for an interview. And so I interviewed for Mr. Haney and Mr. Sanders for the coaching job. And uh, we got ready to leave and was on our way back to Louisville. And Mr. Hickman told me, he says, Corky, you need to talk a little more in your interviews. I said, Coach, I didn't have a chance. You did all the talking. <laughs> That's a, uh, Yeah, but it, so I ended up coming here in 1956. And uh, great, had great, uh, great years at Hodgenville High School. We were in the state championship on one, one occasion, and we always won more than 20 games each season. Uh, time I went to state tournament in 1958, uh, we'd won the regional championship, and I, I got, was notified by Air Force headquarters in Denver, Colorado, to, to report back to active duty. And, of course, I wanted to go to state tournament. So I went down and I talked to one of the lawyers in town, and, and – he didn't really have any advice other than say, well, you might write a letter of, uh, of resignation and they might, might let you out. Of course, there wasn't any wars going on or anything then, so I took his advice. I wrote a letter to Denver, Colorado, headquarters of Air Force, and they let me out, so I got to go to state tournament. <laughs> Where we went to state tournament twice, and I ended up coaching 13 years and uh, spent, spent five years in in the superintendent's office, uh, writing educational projects for federal funding. And then I became the high school principal for 13 years, so I worked for the school system for 31 years. Share some of those stories with of your basketball players. Okay. Well, I had a great bunch of boys. We still get together once a year, and I got them all over the country, all the way to California, and they come in, and we have a, we have a big time. But for some of the funny stories we had, uh, we were running through our offense uh, one day with no defense. It was a continuity offense where everybody changed positions and everything. And I had a boy on the team, and and I told him, I said, now we're not going to take any shots. You just keep continuing through your offense. So a couple of minutes after we was running through our offense, he went in and shot a layup. I said, Carlos, I told you not to shoot. He said, Coach, but I was wide open. <laughs> oh, but uh, we're, we're, we're a close bunch, and, and uh, I, I never really had any difficulties. Uh, the boys were, were great. And I, I'll tell you another story, and I'll have to mention the name here is Tommy Duffer. Before the, the day before the game, I always checked them in at uh, bed check. You know, they had to be in by 10 o'clock. 
So this particular day, I was ch checking him in, and I couldn't find Tommy. So I looked and looked, and I couldn't find him anywhere. So finally, I found him in the balcony of the old theater, sound asleep. He'd gone to the movie and fell asleep, and still in the balcony. So, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's about the two of the funny stories. Well, I can tell you one more on Tommy. Uh, we were playing a Christmas tournament at Somerset, and we won the tournament. And the boys got to celebrating and jumping around on the bed, and he sprained his ankle. So I have to go up to his house every day and give him a treatment on his ankle. And he lay in the bed flat of his back, and he had a bow and arrow set, and he'd shoot arrows in the, in the ceiling. He had arrows sticking in the ceiling of his bedroom. Uh, and uh, <coughs> he uh, received uh, uh, 100 parking tickets. I got him a scholarship at uh, Tennessee Tech, and they sent him home. And he had, his mother was about 88 years old, and, and, uh, and uh, his grandmother, who he, they, who he lived with, was about 100 years old. And so anyway, anyway, he come home, and they said, Tommy, what are you doing home? He said, I did so well the first semester, I, they let me come home this <laughs> semester. <laughs> uh, he was a pistol. I could tell stories on him all day long, but yeah, he, was, uh, he was probably the best uh, offensive basketball player that I ever had. They were ready. Now, I'm telling you, they, they had a good time. I'll never forget. Uh, uh, what, what's, what's the one's name that's uh, in the service? Eddie. Eddie. I was uh, home in bed asleep about 2 o'clock in the morning, and his dog had just had pups, and he called me up and wanted to know if I wanted a pup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was something else. Let's talk about some of those other jobs that you have had in LaRue County. You mentioned them briefly a while ago. Well, you know, uh, of course, it was difficult for me to uh, write educational projects. I had never done that before. But uh, I remember uh, a particular situation where that Mr. Sanders had asked me to uh, write a, a, up a program for where you had to send to the state tournament uh, state term of state state uh, board of education for them to approve our uh, educational projects in school here and so I'll never forget that it took me uh, I was high school principal and it, it had to end up writing a Susan, Susan Roe book catalog and we took it to Frankfurt and he wouldn't let me take it so he sent one of his other people up there and they approved it no additions no deletions and then you have to bring it back before the board of education they have to approve it and he wouldn't let me come to the Board of Education meeting. So they approved that, and, and he took the credit. So that's, that's, that's what you need to do. Your boss has to get the credit. <laughs> but the high school principal, I loved it. I never had a major discipline problem. I love the kids. I still love them. I see them all the time, and I'm really, really close to them. And, and uh, it was one of the great experiences I ever had was being the high school principal. Let's talk about some of these different trophies oh. and plaques that we have here around in uh, well, your room here, in your Corky room. Well, I have pictures over on the wall of my three state tournament teams that I'm so proud of. And, of course, I have the trophy up here for the Hall of Fame at the University of Louisville. And over on this side, well, they have a basketball tournament named after me. And then they also have the basketball floor named after me. All of my whole family was there, and uh, it was a you know pretty big surprise to me, and uh, and I, I really appreciate it. That that really makes me feel good that people appreciate it enough to name the floor after me. I remember the moment the principal and the athletic director came to me and told me that they were they were going to name the floor after me, and and so uh, naturally I noted uh, my, uh, notified all my whole family and they all showed up and that was great and that's the first time I've guessed in a long time and everybody was was there at the same time so that's something you really appreciate and uh, and when I go to the games now I always sit where my name's at because I know who, who I know who I am you know I, I'm getting so old I can't remember who I am so <laughs> oh me. of course this is a small community practically everybody in the stands knows who I am anyway and 
on a particular night when when they have the Courtney Cor, Corky Cox Invitational, well, I have to present the trophies. So I'm out in the middle of the floor with trophies, and of course they have uh, four games, and you have you give four different trophies, and of course the people in the stands and everything are really nice to me, and I, I appreciate it. And I'll never forget, as long as I live, this one boy that won the most valuable player, well, I, I was getting presenting him the trophy, and uh, I said, uh, son, I said, uh, are you a U of K or U of L fan? He said, I'm neither. I'm a Duke fan. <laughs> <laughs>Uh, gave me a birthday party a year, year before last, and we had over 350 people there. They all signed these pictures, which I think a lot of. And you know, I've seen people that I hadn't seen in 10 years, and I had people coming in from all over the country to, to the party, and uh, a lot of my basketball players and cheerleaders showed up, and it was just a great situation uh, f to, for me to see all these people, and I appreciated my wife and daughters putting this uh, birthday party together for me. All, the, all these other things I've got up here, a coach of the coach of the years, uh, in all the conferences and in the region. And my daughter last week gave me the sign over there of Kentucky with, with Corky Cox, number three, and a big University of Louisville picture there, so I'm proud of that. I have wonderful kids. My son and my three daughters, they're, they're really good to me and do anything in the world for me. And the man, man, he's seven years old, he's got a six and a seven year old grandson. And, and if you put them all together, grandson and great, I have 17. So, I, so when they all come, I'm glad to see them leave. <laughs> And as you all know, I'm an I'm a avid golfer. I play golf at five days a week. And I'm, I'm a pretty good player. And uh, uh, I've won club championships. And, and I've won ma uh, amateur tournaments around uh, the state of Kentucky. And of course, my son is, is a golf pro. And he's been selected uh, the outstanding golfer in Kentucky. And I'll never forget, as long as I live, uh, we played in the father-son tournament in the state of Kentucky, and he and I, we won the tournament. So that, that was a re really exciting time, and uh, it's something that I love to do, and uh, in fact, the way I, that's the way I make my living. You know, my wife only gives me $100 a month, so I have to, <laughs> I have to, I have to, have to do something to make a little money. I remember when him and I got married, why uh, we was married about a couple months and she wanted to go to Opera Land. So I had to trade a vacation day so I'd have a long day, so I want to take off a Friday. So I go out and see Mr. Sanders and he, what are you, what are you going to do? I said, we're going to Opera Land. He said, you, you and Emma are going to Opera Land? I said, yes, sir. He said, hey, Clara, come here. I said, uh, Emma and Corky are going to Opera Land. You want to go with them? So... <laughs> Next day, we got up, ready to leave. He said, I want to drive. So I knew better to let him drive. But anyway, he talked me into it. So we got in the car and started towards E-Town. I said, Mr. Sanders, Nashville is the other way. Oh, he says, we got a lot of time. He says, let's just drive down through western Kentucky and do a little sightseeing and go on to Nashville that way. So I said, okay. So we get down to Barkley Dam. He stops and goes in and gets a room. That's as far as we get. <laughs> And another time, we were all in vacation in Florida, and uh, he, he wanted to go to Disney World. I said, Mr. Sanders, that's three and a half hours from where, where we were at Sarasota. So uh, he, he said, uh, oh, let's go. He kept on for two other days. So uh, I said, okay. So I, I was driving, so I had to drive. We drove, drove three and a half hours over to Disney World, and we got our tickets and went in. Fifteen minutes after we were in, and he said, let's go home. So he took his wife, Clara, out and sit in my van while we, we only stayed about three hours in there. In there. And he, he took his wife out, and she, they had to sit out there and wait for us. 
but he, he, I could tell you stories all day long. I'll tell you another really good story. I t took him to Louisville, and uh, he was, they was checking his heart and was having a stress test. So he was on that thing about three minutes, and bingo, he hit the floor. And so they rushed him to the hospital and everything, you know. So after a little while, well, I got to go in and see him. So I went in the room in the hospital to see him. He looked up at me and he said, Corky, ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm all right. I said, well, Miss Sanders, if you're all right, get up and take your clothes and your shoes off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, he, but i tell you one thing. He had a wonderful wife. Ed Clara was a great person. Yeah, well, of course, education, as far as the student body and everything, has, has really changed. In LaRue County, especially, we have a, a, a big percentage of students who live with somebody other than their mother and father. They either live with an aunt, uncle, or a grandparent. And, of course, that's a big difference because it, you know, back when, when I was principal, well, if you had a little problem with somebody, well, you'd put them in the car and go talk to mom and dad. And, and we get we get things straightened out, straightened out, but that don't happen anymore. It, it's just it's just a whole altogether different situation. And of course, we always had visitors at school, but now they got the doors locked. You can't you can't visit. You know, you have to get special permission to go into school, and uh, it's just a whole lot different. And you know, I passed out there uh, a couple of days ago, and I looked, and I bet you there was 300 cars in the parking lot. I think every student out there has got a car now and all the teachers. And, and before, when I was principal, we might have had five or six. <laughs> Basketball, it's, it's involved, like, evolved like everything else. I mean, it's a, it's a whole lot different. The, the rules have changed. And uh, the, the way that they uh, play offense and defense have changed. And uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a lot better game now than it was. But, uh, but because back then, uh, you know, we didn't have all the, you know, things going on that, that they have, have going on now. I know when I was coaching, everybody in school wanted to be on the basketball team. Now it's a lot difficult, more difficult to get boys to play. And... Uh, this year we had a great year, but we ended up getting beat one point in the, in the regional tournament, which is very disappointing because I thought we had the best team in the region. But as uh, far as the basketball uh, team, uh, you know, you have a situation where all the kids are close, you know, and, and it's, it's really a good opportunity for kids to relate to other kids. And, of course, we had a good football program too. And if you remember, Mr. Capel came here as the football coach. And he later was my assistant basketball coach. Then he was later my assistant principal, and he was my high school coach in basketball. So that was that was kind of unusual. Well, it was very difficult. Uh, there's no no question about it. Uh, when you take the schools out of the community, why well, you know it, it hurts the community. But it turned out to be a real good situation because we ended up with a great high school. And, uh, of course, the kids took it personally. A lot, we had a lot of uh, conflicts because of the situation of people coming from different schools. And, uh, of course, we didn't have a gym. And I was hard as a basketball coach. And so we had to go to different places to have a basketball practice. For the first part of the uh, the season uh, we had an old gym up at Hodgenville but it burned down so I had to get players in a bus and, and go to Buffalo or Hart Memorial or Sonora anywhere I could find a place to practice but you know we end up going to state tournaments so that didn't work that worked out pretty pretty good uh, but uh, th things are it was so different because you know, the kids had to get together in, in the situation because there was so much rivalry between uh, Hodgenville, Buffalo, and Magnolia. But it, you know, it took a, it took about a good year before that they realized that they are all uh, going to the same school and had the same opportunities. So, so it was difficult for a year. But after that, everything seemed to get together, and 
and uh, it turned out that uh, I think it's one of the best schools in the whole state of Kentucky. My wife now, she uh, came, came here from Michigan. She was up there working, and she's a graduate from Berea College. And Mr. Sanders was trying to hire a teacher, and so he ended up hiring her to come and uh, teach at LaRue County High School. So I remember uh, we was walking out of the boiler room, going to the gym one day, and she's in front of me, and I said, you know what, if I, if I was a little younger, I'd be after you. She said, uh, age don't make any difference. So anyway... <laughs> We filled around for a long time, you know, talking and everything, and and uh, finally we had a date. Now, I, I'm quite a bit older than she is. Uh, I, I think I was 44, and, and, and she was 23, and we got married. And so in, anyway, uh, she asked me to marry her, and, and she asked me, and I said, I, I don't know about that. So she asked me the second time, and I said, well, I don't know. You go on home. And she lived in Virginia. I said, when you come back, we'll make a decision. She says, I'm not coming back. <laughs> so, so anyway, she put the pressure on me, and so we got married. We got married on a Friday night at 7 o'clock. And I'll never forget, as long as I lived, Brother Hayes was the, was the preacher, and he took 45 minutes to talk her out of marrying me. He said, I was too much older than she was, and my ex-wife lived here, and blah, 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 and all that stuff. And I remember Emma said, are you finished, Brother Hayes? And Brother Hayes said, yes, I'm finished, Emma. Emma said, well, let's get on with the wedding then. So, so we got married. And now that was at 7 o'clock, and at 7.30 I was on the stage for commencement. She, she's really good to me and takes good care of me. I love her to death. But it's the best thing I've ever done. When we got married, well, of course, Emma's parents didn't know anything about it, and so, of course, they lived in Virginia. So after about three weeks, we drove down there to tell them. So we went in, and of course, their daddy's an old coal miner, you know, and, and we told them what the situation was and everything. The old man said, well, it's about time. I thought she was going to be an old maid. She, he, she was just 23. So anyway, we got ready to leave, and we got out to the car. Emma's mother called her back in the house and, and said, Emma, you've got a good man. Whatever he wants, see that he gets it. And she still calls and talks to me. I just love her to death. She's 95 years old. Had a great life, boy, I'm telling you right now. Of course, I love everybody. You know, I, I can't think of anybody that I dislike. <laughs>